Yesterday we looked at the value of wise words. And besides the fact that these good, wise words are valuable, using proper speech is also important because of the negative consequences that come from evil. Solomon addresses some of these negative consequences of evil words in his book of Proverbs. He makes the statement that an evil man is ensnared by the transgression of his lips, Proverbs 12 and verse 13. An evil man is going to speak things that are also evil. Remember, for as he thinks within himself, so is he, Proverbs 23 and verse 7. His evil thoughts are going to come out in the words that he uses, and when this happens, and he sins with his lips, he will bring trouble upon himself. Solomon says elsewhere that in the mouth of the foolish is a rod for his back, but the lips of the wise man will protect them, Proverbs 14 and verse 3. The good words of a wise man will provide protection from harm that might otherwise come against him. But in contrast, the evil words of a foolish man will only bring danger to his life. Proverbs 20 and verse 17 says that bread obtained by falsehood is sweet to a man, but afterward his mouth will be filled with gravel. It's common for people to lie in order to get what they want in life. But when they do this, they may have the initial satisfaction and pleasure of enjoying whatever it is that they were able to obtain through this falsehood. But this sweet taste is eventually going to change as if his mouth were filled with gravel. Now this could possibly refer to the guilt that one may later have for lying in order to acquire what it was that he wanted. But it can also refer to the negative consequences of lying, such as receiving a bad reputation, or even the threat of vengeance from the one that was deceived. But either way, Solomon is emphasizing the fact that lying in order to gain sort of an advantage over someone is something that is common, but it is neither wise nor is beneficial in the long term. He goes on in Proverbs 20 and verse 19 to say that he who goes about as a slanderer reveals secrets. Therefore, do not associate with a gossip. One of the more common sins of the tongue is that of gossip. And Solomon offers some practical advice here. He says, do not associate with a gossip. If you associate with a gossip, then they will tell others the secret things that they find out about you and things that you may not want repeated to others. But even one who is blameless and upright can suffer harm as the result of gossip being spread about them. So it's better to not keep company with a gossip at all. And those who follow after wisdom will be ones who will heed this advice. But those who do not will continue to associate with one who gossips. Therefore, for the one who is spreading gossip, there is the negative consequence of losing their godly friends as they follow the instruction of the wise man and begin leaving those gossiping friends. And those who are engaging in gossip are left with only their evil friends. We also read in Proverbs 20 and verse 20 that he who curses his father or his mother, his lamp will go out in time of darkness. One of the Ten Commandments contained the instruction for one to respect or honor their parents. Elsewhere, the law stated that cursed is he who dishonors his father and his mother, Deuteronomy 27 and verse 16. And the one who curses his father and mother will be cursed himself. The phrase, his lamp will go out in time of darkness, is in contrast with the reward of honoring one's parents, that your days may be prolonged, Exodus 20 and verse 12. There are blessings for honoring one's parents, and there are negative consequences for failing to do so. And Solomon says in another passage, For there will be no future reward for the evil man. The lamp of the wicked will be put out, Proverbs 24 and verse 20. Friends, this is the fate of one who uses his speech to curse his parents. Then we read in Proverbs 30, verses 32 and 33, If you have been foolish in exalting yourself, or if you have plotted evil, then put your hand on your mouth. For the churning of milk produces butter, and pressing the nose brings forth blood, so the churning of anger produces strife. What is being addressed here is the sin of boasting. 
And we have to remember that whenever we take this attitude of arrogance, then we will end up hurting others because we see ourselves as the only one that is significant. Friends, we thank you for joining us for our program today. Consider these things and have a blessed day.